Hello there, let's check out the art of finding Dory and um, just flip through stuff, talk a little, little bit about the movie and um, first thing I want to say is just how bizarre it is that that movie even came out. Like it was definitely one of those things that you just don't expect a sequel to come out and even though it was kind of weird that it came out it was definitely not like a bad movie and I was actually visiting my um, home country when it first came out I was very surprised that the the movie came out and when I was there and I just decided to go go watch it and I watched it in Russian and so I never I think I watched it in English like a year or two later but it's just uh, super funny how uh, I left for like two or three months <laughs> and then that movie was uh, playing and I really wanted to see it in theaters so there's just something else but how incredible that movie was and the first one too like it just built such a big foundation for animation and how you know the water works and all of that great stuff because I did hear how they had to create a whole, you know, light and color engine. Like, <laughs> this is probably what it's talking about, of how um, the water has to interact with light and how it has to show you, you know, through small bleaks of blue between the other blue to show you what the depth is like. Is it far away? Is it not far away? Just like so many things that were definitely new and fresh and there we go starting off with act one and how dory was a baby <laughs> it was like super super gigantic eyes and how cute she was they even have like the little teenage teeth in here that is a really adorable but something just some things they don't really look at this one they they have a receding headline the bolding for the dad like that is just hilarious i think i saw it on like instagram or twitter or something that people were pointing out how he his design like even though it's a fish you can still show that it was like a dad and how incredible that is and that's just the, the beauty of animation is that no matter how far you go you can still communicate such simple things and like very little 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 details that are like that but yeah the movie was really cool i i really enjoyed like the side stories and the side characters were pretty fun um maybe it was just like a different scale it, did, it felt like very different in terms of uh stakes compared to the first movie but it's definitely not like one of those things that went off the course too far for the story and just the, oh my god look at these i don't know who did this but this is crazy marker okay opposite ta -ta -ta -ta. pencil this is a pencil oh my that is so soft looking i really need to learn how to draw pencil like that this makes me want to go and draw with pencil and this is such a soft kind of imagery it doesn't even feel like it you know but yeah the soft drawings that you find in these books is just it's just one of my favorite things in the world is that you can definitely find a lot of cool stuff in here that are usually not like look at that look at this like a tiny dory tiny tiny fish in there and you can just tell everything already how scalable the whole painting is and how deep the water goes i think imitating oh my god look at this drawings i think imitating uh like water depth has been one of my biggest kind of like things 
and the hardest <laughs> struggles that I just can't get past. Because it, it, it's just so easy to overdo sometimes to just add too much blur and too much blue. But when you do it right, it looks it looks just so good. And also, I'm just a big fan of underwater uh, stuff. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, but, uh, like, the games, any game that is underwater, anything that you can see, you know, swim, dive, fish, it's just my jam. I always do it, no matter where I'm at. Like Subnautica, for example. If you haven't, if you love this movie, and you haven't played Subnautica, at least for like a little bit, or watch um, a little bit of YouTube of Subnautica, I definitely, you know, I highly recommend um, checking out that game. Look at that, so gestural. It feels like a watercolor. It might be watercolor, but but that is scary looking. <laughs> But um, don't mind <laughs> sounds in the white room, I'm sorry. But yeah, the entire like book is just something else when it comes to underwater paintings and depth paintings and all of that great blue stuff. I just can't get enough of it. That guy was not my favorite guy. <laughs> Like every other character was just like, oh, that's cool, but then this guy, I don't know, I wasn't, I wasn't vibing with him that much. Maybe it was just the voice acting too, but I was just like, eh, I don't like him. <laughs> but everyone else was just super funny. I like the, I like every, uh, every character that was there. Like the, the big big one, the um, with the big mouth, she was super super fucking cute. <gasps> oh. Did I say fucking? Oh no, I can't say fucking. I'm not allowed to say fucking. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to cut it out later, but I'm too deep into the recording now. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you, if if kids are watching, don't say that word. <laughs> oh, that's super funny. Black ink cups. Sometimes I just can't watch my mouth, can't I? Huh? Like every video, I'm like, man, I'm not gonna swear, I'm not gonna swear, and then I do it. <laughs> oh, look at the sculptures. That is adorable. But yeah, I haven't seen this movie in like at least four or five years. I definitely need to go back and, you know, check it out. And um, a lot of storyboards. I need to check it out because I have the subscription, like the, the Disney Plus. They accidentally, well, I accidentally forgot to cancel it. And then they charged me an another month. And I'm like, well, I guess I will watch a little bit more of Disney Plus, even though I didn't really want to. It was like not in my plans, but there's some good movies and good shows it's just I, I had like not a lot of free time last month so i couldn't really get into it but oh dory scale that's cute that is adorable and then the the orca pool and just a whole observatory like Marine Life Institute. I really wanted to visit. Like the moment I saw the movie, I was like, man, I want to go to the aquarium. I want to go like somewhere where there's a zoo or some kind of orcas or whatever it is. Like, I don't really care what it is. I just want to see it. It's just so incredibly expensive these days to go. And I'm just like, oh, maybe next time, maybe next time. I need to really save up for that, to be honest. That looks super scary. 
I need to save up for like an aquarium thing. <laughs> Look at that hat. Oh, look at this one. Maybe I should get a tattoo like that. Just like a tiny little fish in there. But, wow. Already getting close to finish line. Oh no, I don't want to finish this book. It's a really good book. But... Let me know if you have, like, watched the movie more than once and, like, what was your favorite part. Mine was definitely, like, the grumpy... <laughs> the grumpy octopus. That was definitely me all the time. Like, no matter... No matter where I'm at, I'm the grumpy octopus. That's my life in a nutshell. I just want to be left alone and just go home. That is an incredible painting. Oh, 3D models. Nice. Oh yeah, that's what she was doing with like tiny little things. She was figuring out how to get home. Oh, I forgot about that part. That was like super cute. Oh, look at that blue, blue light in this painting. Like it's so desaturated and works so well. Making logo and trucks is the most important part of the movie. The purple and orange, can't go wrong with that. Amazing colors. I wish there was like more development sketches though for characters and stuff. Like that, yeah. <laughs> Except these are the creators probably. The acknowledgement. Oh. That's cute. I think the octopus was definitely like the vibe of the entire movie, but thank you so much for watching. Oh, look at that. I hope you enjoyed it and happy painting.